heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hey everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl, and I'm gonna welcome you to my YouTube channel. And since I just finished my last chat, live chat that I do on Monday nights, and I had, you know, some decent clothes on and a little makeup, I thought I'd do the introduction to my next video. In this video, I'm going to share with you part three of my series on how to grow food cheaply and quickly in your emergency garden. And this is now we're preparing for the fall and this uh, winter garden. And this is part three. So today I'm going to share with you some more seeds that I sowed. Also, how I'm teaching my grandchildren how to sow seeds in this video. And I'm going to show you how to save and store seeds. Okay, let's get started. Hello, gardeners. It's Saturday, July 25th. And I'm outside checking on my seedlings and watering my food for us. The sun hasn't come up, so it's not even 7 o'clock. But I wanted to show you how well the little seedlings are that we sowed this week. Here are all of the kale seedlings, these four six packs. And of course, you know, we have collars and purple top turnips, red mustard, and regular curly giant mustard. So I'm very happy and I'm gonna take you along my journey and I'm going to share with you every time I sow some seeds and periodically update you on them. I'm also going to share with you how I pot up right here. You can see that it, it's a little dry and seeds are barely coming up here, but enough. So now, since all of the seeds are in this black tray, I'm just going to water them from the bottom. And yesterday when I told you that I was going to keep my water outside, <clears throat> I want you to know that I'm right at my back door and I will bring it inside when the temperature goes up so that if I have to water when the temperature is between uh, 90 and 105, 8 degrees, um, I won't be putting scalding water on them. I'm going to bring the water inside. Okay, so that's it for now. Let me show you something else. And so from here on out, like I said, I'm watering from the bottom up. Now let me see if I can show you that. So I'm gonna take one seed, six packs, pack out. And this is a level surface here. And I'm gonna pour about an inch of water. And I shook it up real good, like I said, so the neem oil, you can see little droplets, little, little beauty spots of neem oil. I'm going to put this in here, and then I'll come back. I'll set my timer on my phone for 15 minutes, so it can absorb these six packs. It can absorb as much water as it needs, and then I'll come back, and remember how dry this looks right in here. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how damp it's going to be. Hey guys, it's been 10 minutes. And I removed one of the six packs out of the tray. And as you can see, it's just a few drops of water. Now, let me share this with you. If I was inside my grow room during the winter, I would take all of these six packs out and dry any drops of water so that I wouldn't have a breeding place for fungus gnats. But since we're outside, and it's going to be close to 100 degrees or in the upper 90s, this would dry up real quickly, so I'm not going to waste time doing that but all the seedlings are now moist on the top and they will dry very quickly at the top because they've been watered from the bottom up now another thing i want to tell you is if you're impulsive like i used to be resist the urge to water the top of your plants trust me you will get less fungus gnats 
thereby getting less fungus. Because if you pour water on the top, and if there is just a microscopic smidgen of fungus growing, you can splash it over into other cells and then it'll just keep spreading because it multiplies very fast. But during this time of year, when you have the wonderful opportunity of starting your seedlings outside, please, 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 you're going to thank me later. Water from the bottom up. Another thing I want to tell you is if you have rain in your forecast, put your dome on over your seeds. Don't throw those plastic domes away. We're going to have some uh, uh, rain uh, is projected by, uh, I think, Tuesday. And if it should come, trust me, this will be covered up. If you're working and you don't know exactly when the rain is going to come, bring your seeds inside. They'll be okay for a day. Okay? Even without a grow light. Because if it's really cloudy for a couple days straight, think about it. Your plants and your uh, seedlings still survive. Okay. Here's an update on the uh, seed storage container that I told you I was going to do. Uh, I did the first six seeds that I sold. And what I did was simply cut the uh, name of the products off of the packages, the seed packages. So here are my blue curled scotch kale. And then I did the thousand head kale. Next was the uh, Georgia Southern Creole collards. And then the uh, Japanese red mustard, and then the regular curly mustard, and last but not least, a purple top turnip. So I'm going to do a little bit every day, and I'll share that with you. Very easy to cut the little labels out, and then just take some tape and tape them on the package. And also, I'm going to number the vials too. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and that will correspond with uh, the seeds as I plant them in the six pack sales. All right. Okay, guys, it is Sunday, and I'm back at starting more seeds. Here, I'm just going to show you that I'm planting more Swiss yard. Um, this one is called... Mm, bear with me. It's called a Vulcan, V-U-L-C-A-N, it's almost like the Rainbow Brights, but it's just the red one. And this one, it grows very well even in the summertime if you can shade it. So I'm going to start two more six packs as well as I'm going to direct sow some seeds um, outside. Now let me share this with you. So you can look down here. You see the seeds? They come in a cluster like beets. Uh, Swiss chard is in the same family as beets. And some people even eat the leaves. Uh, so I'm only going to put one cluster because when that seed pod break open, it's several seeds. So I'm only going to put one in each six pack sale. Okay. Also, while I'm doing this, I want you guys to know that you can have some little seeds in your seed starting mix. So sometimes you'll get a little weed seed. And that is another reason why I recommend that you use the boiling water uh, to sanitize your seeds. If you're new to my channel, go back, back please and look at part one and two of this series, how to grow healthy food cheaply for your fall and winter garden. So I'm gonna drop just one seed here in each cell. Did I get these two? No, I didn't. And I've labeled my tube as well as the six pack. So this is number 15. Okay, so now all I have to do is just lightly cover the seed up. Okay. 
as you can see me doing here, and usually I just use my fingers, guys. If there's a big piece of anything, I take it out. And the soil is still moist from the other day. I didn't do this one. Let me start again. I've got to add seeds to this one. So we only need six. Let's make a hole, drop it in, make a little hole. I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna turn this way and drop it in. I'm gonna do it with my left hand so you can see it in the camera. That looks like two and it was, so I separated them. Because I already sowed some of these seeds a few weeks ago and they are doing very well outside um, I have one six pack in the greenhouse and I have one six pack being shaded outside. So number 15 will go in my journal as Swiss Shard and the variety is Vulcan. Okay, so now let's move over to here and show you what I sowed this morning. Number seven is the brandy wine tomatoes. I usually grow uh, during the winter for my spring. Uh, I usually grow tomatoes that are that are uh, heat tolerant and that are not susceptible to a lot of uh, insects. I usually grow those in the winter time for the spring harvest. You guys, if you've been with me a while, you know that I harvest all of my tomatoes once temps reach 90 degrees because they're not gonna flower anymore. It's just too hot. Some people will shade those tomatoes in my gardening zone and watch them real carefully to make sure that they don't um, die on them and then they'll start blooming and producing again in the fall. But because I like to switch up and try some more varieties, I stop cloning them, uh, cloning the spring tomatoes and I just start off with brand new tomatoes. Okay, so this is the brandy wine, number seven. That's a really big tomato. And then I have number eight. I did the mortgage lifter, and these are tomatoes that I've always I've grown before. Number eight, and over here in number fourteen, when you sow so many seeds like I do, it is very easy to get mixed up. That's why I have to stay organized. Because, honey, I have grown some seeds, uh, uh, sowed some seeds, and I didn't know until the tomato came on the vine what it was. And this is a new one. This is that big mushroom type of tomato. And I always grow something uh, in the fall for fun. So that's what it is. It is a giant mushroom basket tomato. And that's number 14. And it corresponds here with number 14. Now, these are all the seeds that I sowed um, Today is Sunday, so it's the beginning of a new week. So these are my all my uh, leafy greens, and they're doing well. And I want to show you something. Now is the time that I'll come in, and I'll just cut some. So I take my little shears, and I'll just come in, and I'll cut out the weakest link. Because I don't need all of these plants these seedlings will turn into big plants. So I really don't need more than two or three. And sometimes the seeds are so small, um, you start off with best you know, intentions and then you end up with two more. So don't pull them up like this because you'll disrupt the root and then you'll have problems. So you can just cut them off and then pick them up and compost, or you can just leave them right there. I'm gonna leave these in here because we're supposed to get a little rain. I pray we get some rain because it's been dry for several weeks. And that's how it is where I live. It's uh, in Mesquite, Texas. It'll be very rainy periods, and then we'll have periods when we don't get any rain for a while. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna show you for now. 
Okay, I want to show you guys something. You remember the big mushroom type of tomato I showed you guys? I didn't want to plant too many of them. So I labeled this 14 for that big mushroom tomato. Where is it? 14. There it is. No, it's mustard. 14 tomato mushroom basket. You see that? Mushroom basket. And since I don't want to grow too many tomatoes, I just put some in these three cells. These first three cells. One, two, three. Now, if you turn over, then I put 16. And 16 is the black cherry. So I will have three of each. The mushroom, large mushroom tomato, and then the black cherry. And I don't really only want maybe one or two, and I'll give, like I said, the extra ones to my daughter. Here's another new seed. It is called uh, Cylinder Beets. It won't be the round beet, but it'll be a dark beet. And um, it looks like this. And also, I planted some, I sold the seeds of Detroit red beets. Hey, everybody. Hi. I'm with Bria and Brian, my grand angels, and we're going to conduct an experiment. And now, I'm not recommending that you all do this. And I'm wearing what, a dress. Okay, you look pretty. What we're going to do is we're going to plant some, uh, we're going to sow some beet seeds into this grow box. And usually in our area, Zone 8A, we sow beet seeds in September. And we're going to sow them approximately a month early because we have created a microclimate between this raised bed that is covered and all of the fruit trees right in this area. We have created a microclimate that lowers the temperature. And then we have these hoop houses that we have uh, here and then right over there and I could run a shade cloth on it. So it rains a little bit and the soil is not real wet, but we're gonna get more rain. So we're going to take these beets. It's called Cylindra beets and they're from Baker Creek. And see, they're not round shaped. They're, they're like a cylinder. Like a, like a what? Like a rectangle or cylinder. I yes. Think. Okay. And as I said previously, I'm going to take some of the seeds out. That's too many, but I'm going to take the seeds out. And this is how they look in the light. And they're a cluster. So it, each one will produce uh, several uh, seedlings. So we're going to space them about three inches apart. And then we're going to water them in. So I'm gonna start right here and put one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put one here. I wish I could do one. You can. Here's two. I and wanna you... do. And then here's where we left off. So you're gonna put one here. Don't just don't try to dig it in. Just I play it there. Do I'm gonna, some. Don't don't push it in, sweetie. I'm gonna let you do it, Bria. Then we're gonna put one about right here. <laughs> and then here. Here you go, Brian. Here's some in your hand. Bria, here's some in your hand, but don't clench yours yet until Brian does his. Here you go, Brian, right here. Just put it right where my finger is. It's approximately three inches, and then we won't have to thin out so much. Don't drop them, Bria. Don't lay them anywhere. See, if you let, see, you drop them on the ground, right? No. They'll go down in the wood chips, and they'll start growing. So you need to pick them up. Here you go, Brian. Mm. Put one here. And one here. This is directly across and try to keep it in a neat little line right here. Hurry, sweetie. I don't see any. Okay, they failed, Bria. They're in the wood chips now. Mm -hmm. You'll be pulling them out later. It's right there. Here. Come on. I like planting. Right here. You like planting seeds? Yeah. It's called sowing. Sometimes I say the wrong word too. Okay, Brian, do you have any more? Right there. You see the little straight line right here, Brian? See that line? Okay, so we're gonna go right here. You have any more left? Oh, that was not a seed. You could have left it there, Brian. Yeah, but that wasn't a seed. 
Okay. See, because you have one right here and you have one right here. Now you have right here. How many do you have left, Ryan? Uh, a lot. A lot? A lot left. Okay, come on, right here. And one right here. Okay, That's how many do you have left? Doing good. Yes, Ryan is doing very well. This one? Oh, okay, so you can finish. Come on. Maybe I can grow this one. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You hear the birds chirping? They're telling each other I'm out here so they won't go and try to get my grapes. They're saying, that lady is out there with those little kids. We better leave. We can't get any grapes right now. Okay? Right they're here. They're saying that. Mm -hmm. Right so here. So they want grapes? Yeah, they've been eating our grapes. Okay, here we go. Right here. Stay left. Come around, Brian. Come around this way. Right here. Right here. You drop one. Okay, good. It's gonna go right here. And then right here. Right here. Where are you dropping seeds? No. Don't do that. Okay, uh, you can't reach it? Okay, very good. Okay, Bria, you can come on. Bring your seeds. Mm. Hear that bird, Brian? Yes. He's saying, that lady is out there. Well, we can't fly over there by those grapes. Nope. That is a funny voice, but I don't think I can speak bird. I can. I, I, Dr. Doodle could, he could talk to the animals, learn their languages, even da 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 da. Okay, Bria. Yes? Where are your seeds? Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay, this is Bria, everybody. Now, can you stand up on that platform right there? Stand up right there. Very good. Now, what you're going to do with your seeds is you're just going to scatter them. Just sprinkle a little at a time. Where are they? Go stand up over here. Ooh. Brian, please let her by. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now you're going to take a seed and you're just going to drop it. That's called Where's broadcasting seeds. Just take one and drop it. Drop it. Drop some more, baby. We have plenty. Just drop it. You don't have to do it like that. Or you can just... You're, Bria, let me show you. Give me, give me some seeds, Bria. Give me a couple. Let me show you. Not all, not all of them. You can do some. Here, hold it. You just do this. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Brian, <laughs> leave it alone, Brian, please. Let her have the chance. I know. I drop them. The drop chance. them. You drop them all? Yep, you can. Good deal. Here. Bria, turn around. So what's the difference in... Broadcasting and sowing. Sowing seeds, we put them specifically in a spot. When we broadcast, we just spread them. I'm going to broadcast. Okay, you go ahead and broadcast yours. Don't put them all. Yeah, just sprinkle them around. You going to broadcast yours, Bria? Go ahead. Just. That's broadcast. Okay, and I'm going to put some around in here. Because you all here. didn't get in this area. And anywhere where I see where it look like it's I too many it close together, we're going to move them out the way. I just want to show you something about collecting seeds. Mary goes and my fingers, nails are a trip because I've been pulling up weeds and plants. Anyway, and planting seeds, sowing seeds. Anyway, marigolds are one of the easiest uh, seeds to collect and sow. And you can see some of the plants here that are going in the compost. But I'm going to just sit these seeds right here. And then I'm going to pull. And you don't have to wait for marigolds for them to dry in order to collect the seeds. Look down in here uh, in this bag of marigolds that I pulled up. And I just want to show you 
See, those are seeds, and you can just plant them again. We still have more than 100 days before the first frost, so I can broadcast these seeds, or I can place them right into these blocks, whatever I want to do with them, and I assure you they will come up, and I'll be showing them to you in hey the guys, future. guys, I want to show you something. Here are marigold seeds. This is why I know that you can pull them and save them uh, when you deadhead them or when you just want to pull them up because I just drop them on the ground and let them come up where they go. And sometimes I don't even drop them. The wind just scatters the seeds. So these all will be picked up and put where I want them. I also want to share something with you. In the video that I made on Mother's Day with my son and my grandchildren coming over and helping me in the food forest, growing weeds and tasting strawberries, and they also took down my uh, morning glory vines, I shared with you that I had some dry pods, seed pods that I was removing. So I didn't pull all the, all the green ones, just the green ones down to save. Um, I have plenty of one uh, seed pods that dried out. And then when you open them up, this is what the seeds look like. And this is what you plant. And you want to make sure that they're thoroughly dry, free from moisture. When you store them in a container, envelope, whatever you decide to use for the next year. Okay. Just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, everybody, this concludes this video. I will bring you part four in a few days. I hope you guys are getting started on your fall and winter gardens. And you know, guys, I always end my video by telling you that God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. As a matter of fact, it'll be August, the relaunch of Lady Cheryl's products. These products are all inspired by nature for your hair, skin, and spirit. And they are made with love right in my kitchen from my heart to yours.